Hi, I'm Diane Lim. I'm the Vice President for Economic Research at the Committee for Economic Development. And I'm here today talking with one of our favorite CED mm -hmm. members, Greg Sherrill. So Greg, can you introduce yourself to sure. the audience? I'm uh, Greg Sherrill. I'm Chairman and CEO of Tenneco. And, uh, not an infrequent visitor to Washington, D.C., but uh, there's a lot of things going up here that uh, influence uh, all of us, both business and our personal lives and families, et cetera, as well. So, so um, the Committee for Economic Development is a business-led nonprofit organization. We work on a lot of public policy issues. And whenever I talk to people about what our organization does, they're always very curious about that. It's like, what does that mean to have business leaders interested in public policy issues? And so I wanted to have this opportunity, take this opportunity to talk with you because um, one of your favorite public policy issues is one of my favorite public policy issues, which is fiscal responsibility. And so I wanted you to tell people a little bit about how you came to be interested in that issue. Um, first, maybe as a, as a business leader, why do you as CEO of Tenneco care about uh, fiscal policy? Look, I think it's absolutely clear that uh, Policies, actions, inaction, whatever, here in Washington, D.C. can have a tremendous influence on our country and, of course, with the United States around the world uh, economically and even in how it winds up uh, uh, impacting business from the incentives that it puts in place or the disincentives that it might put in place. So as, as leader of a multinational corporation, I feel part of my responsibility is to take an interest in that and to try to promote policies that are pro-growth, uh, forward-looking, uh, you know, set us up for the future. You know, to me, all economics and all business almost starts and ends with confidence. And uh, there's a tremendous amount of interaction between what goes on here in Washington, D.C. with our policymakers, uh, legislators, and, and what eventually winds up as either business confidence or consumer confidence, which is what's going to drive our business as well. So. Do you think most business leaders are like you? Like, um, what is the level of awareness, do you feel, among the leadership community in terms of the connection between yeah. what goes on in Washington and what goes on with your businesses? Well, you know, I, I, I couldn't give you accurate statistics there. I know there's a lot of businessmen very concerned. Uh, I work with uh, colleagues, you know, around the country. Uh, I'm currently serving a, a, a two-year term as chairman of the National Association of Manufacturers. We're 14,000 manufacturing businesses uh, that are interested, obviously, in policy uh, here in Washington. Uh, I've also been very active for the last four or five years, uh, not only with CED, but the Fix the Debt mm -hmm. effort. And uh, we have a number of business people you know, involved in that and see it. And, and perhaps it was heightened by the financial recession. I think that grabbed everyone's attention. And not just the recession itself, but then the potential direction that policy could have gone and sometimes did go post-recession still is. I mean, I'm very much a believer that we're still living in the strong ripple effects of that financial crisis, mm -hmm. and uh, both politically and, and economically and as businesses right now. Well, it's interesting with the financial crisis at the time, I thought, wow, this is quite a wake-up call for, the, for our whole country. Exactly. Um, but the wake-up call seems to have only been heard by the private sector. Uh, at I least. would agree with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I keep waiting for, okay, this is, now that it's the public sector's turn, turn yeah. to wake up, and it hasn't quite caught on the way it did with the private sector. No, and, and that really kind of comes back to, I think, the more fundamental interest that I have. Uh, I mean, I simply grew up somehow really respecting the United States, our form of government, for what it was, the history of it, how it started 230, 240 years ago, as an experiment that, quite frankly, is still going on today. Uh, that a country can literally have the people govern itself through its elected representatives, uh, which had never been tried before when, it, when, when we you know, created that system and has had lots of stress and strain through our history many times. I think the financial recession created another stress and strain there. Mm -hmm. And it is so easy for elected officials, I believe, to, you know, sort of focus on things that are not controversial. You know, it, it, and the same is true everywhere. In business, there's many times where leaders have to step forward, quite frankly, telling people something they may not want to hear 
but at the same time, telling it with the credibility that, look, we're in this thing together, and we do have to fix it. And I clearly think our forward fiscal policy, the level of debt today and the way it continues to rise, is certainly an issue that we have to face. I'm sure we're going to get into that. It, it becomes a transgenerational issue as well, so I think our generation has a huge responsibility to face up to it today because it simply gets worse and worse as we go through the years. But it's really a test of, again, this great system of ours. Mm -hmm. People do have to wake up, get interested, and hold our leadership accountable. They're accountable to only one group, and that is us, the citizens of the country. And if the citizens of the country are somewhat silent, they kind of take the easy path sometimes, I think. So it's one of the reasons why I keep pushing. And uh, I, there's a, it's a great effort. It always has been every time. It's hard to mobilize people who are just involved in their daily lives, right? right. That this really can affect them, and not only them, but their children and their grandchildren as well. So that's a great segue. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask you, my devotion to the issue of fiscal responsibility has come from my background as an economist, but mm -hmm. also, probably more importantly, because I'm a mother of four. Yes. And um, so I wanted you to speak a little bit about, you have two roles in your life, or at I least do. two roles. At least two. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and I come from, uh, I have a great family. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, I have four grown daughters uh, that are ages 31 to 38. I have nine grandchildren, wow. and at home I have a three and a half year old son. Yeah. So I almost yeah. cover multiple generations with, you know, my children, if you will. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and it, it's absolutely crucial when I look at them. And of course, as a mother, as a father, it does help it bring it home mm -hmm. uh, that we want what is best for them, and and we do everything we can to raise them with the right values and, and character, you know, and instill that in them. But at the same time, we've got a situation in our country now where if we don't address some of the public policy issues surrounding the long-term fiscal trajectory, we are going to really saddle those generations with a very difficult challenge that, that could literally strip from them their ability to address in their lifetimes the priorities that are important to them. Right, and priorities for our entire economy, exactly. actually. Exactly. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. So, thank you.